Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we are exploring the beautiful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England, following in the trail of Herbert Evans, who cycled around this region and wrote about his experiences in this wonderful book, The Highways and Byways in Oxford and the Cotswolds, published in 1905, 114 years ago. Here we are at the top of the steep edge of the hills. We've been on this escarpment before in Broadway, Edge Hill and other places. It forms the western boundary of the Cotswold Hills. In the north it overlooks the great plain of the Midlands known as the Vale of Evesham, down which Stratford's River Avon flows to join the River Severn at Tewkesbury. And here we look over the valley of that mighty Severn River and the Vale of Gloucester. It's on these slopes that most of the quarries are to be found. Here it is that the wonderful Cotswold Oolite limestone is dug from the ground and used to create the beautiful romantic dry stone walls, cottages and stately homes of this region. You could say it's the very foundation stone of the beauty of the Cotswolds itself. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at the beginning of this episode, I broke the golden rule of never dating a film. So I am now able to tell you that all the churches are still mainly closed, even to the likes of your Cotswold Explorer. So any images you see of the inside of most of the extraordinary churches in this episode have been and will be library pictures. Now, this is something that Ross and I would never normally countenance, except for these really rather awkward circumstances. So come with me and let's explore Painswick and its surrounding villages. Evans writes of Painswick, it is chiefly remembered for its singular churchyard planted with long rows of yews clipped into the same oval shape. The first set of these trees was planted in 1700 and there is a legend to the effect that their number has always been 99 and that it's impossible to increase it. Evans also says, but as a matter of fact, the number at present, in 1905, is 118. The churchyard has been for years a place of recreation for the locals who walk its tree-lined paths with their dogs. The gatehouse was built at the beginning of the 20th century from the timbers of the old belfry. The church itself is a late 15th century perpendicular church, the likes of which we've come across many times before, built after the dynastic struggles and at the time the clothing industry was growing in strength. A slightly grimmer memory of Painswick is a resident at the time of Henry VIII, one Sir Anthony Kingston. He was a staunch, indeed fanatical royalist, who inherited the manor of Painswick from his father and gathered a small army to help King Henry suppress the Pilgrimage of Grace, a Catholic uprising which started in Yorkshire and spread southwards, an action for which Kingston received a knighthood. He also became an agent for the King in his efforts to punish those who had supported the rebels. One such, the Mayor of Bodmin, got a message from Kingston that he would like to visit on such and such a date. The mayor was keen to impress and set up a dinner fit for a king, but before they sat down, Kingston said he wanted a gallows to be set up for a hanging that must take place later. The mayor arranged it, and a dinner of great celebration was enjoyed by all. It was only after the meal that Kingston revealed that the gallows was for the mayor himself, for the support he had supposedly given to the rebels, and he was summarily hanged. At home, Kingston set up a gallows on the village green of a local hamlet called Sheepscombe, where he appointed a full-time hangman, giving him an acre of land from which to live and which is still called Hangman's Acre. There are no records of how many were hanged at Sheepscombe, but the Enclosures Commission, founded in 1549, caused considerable upset amongst the population of the area and gave ample excuse for Kingston to bring insurgents to what he called justice. There is a story that I must admit is slightly difficult to confirm. 
but it is that the very last man hanged by the Painswick hangman was brought to him with great kerfuffle and urgency in the middle of the night by Kingston himself. Now the hangman, having been dragged from his bed, was not in the best of moods, and he hurriedly took the unfortunate victim, who was already hooded and gagged and bound, straight to the gallows and hanged him. It was only the next morning when he came to cut him down from the rope and remove his hood that he discovered it was his only and much-loved son. Hardly surprising that that was the last person he hanged. Just a short distance north of village is the Painswick Beacon. This Iron Age fortification is incredible to walk over and the views to the west over the Vale of Gloucester are incomparable. We flew the drone from here and Ross's images really do speak for themselves. I hope you've enjoyed our visit to Painswick and its surrounding villages. Next time we'll be heading south, outside the domain of our usual literary companion Herbert Evans, to see what the area offers. Just subscribe to the channel and we'll let you know when to join us there. See you soon.